Hello, beer tubers, and welcome to another beer review with me, Peter, the master of hobbits. Today, cracking my first beer from Insight Cellars. So, Insight Cellars is coming from the ashes of Mikla Bauhelm. I've reviewed some beer from their side project, which is called Copenhagen Commons, which was fantastic. But this is going to be the first beer I try from them, and I also think the first release. Uh, so yeah, this will be really nice. They've done web shop releases and all the stuff so far, so you've been able to get it in bundles if uh, you want to try it. So it will be really interesting because this is with a very hype brewery. So this is the Insight Cellars and Boke Sensei. So if you know anything about Insight Cellars, basically what happened was Mickler sold or ended up closing down Bauhaun. I don't know the entire details about it, but it was a damn shame because Bauhaun had some really nice blends of Wild Ale. Uh, Aaron, uh, who is, I know, his last name escapes me, but he's like the master blender there, the sour scientist, and he made some really nice stuff. And uh, I've reviewed a very big handful of Bauhaun. But as that closed, he and some investors figured out a way to buy the remaining like barrels and spear in the barrels and whatnot so that uh, the uh, Bauhaun beers could live on, but in a new format and also newer blends could live on. So uh, that's why we have Inside Cellars today. And it is uh, so far a, a brewery that's been out with some really hydrated beers. Uh, a lot of people talk very fondly of them. They, I don't know, you don't see them get much mainstream hype, but like in, in the circles of people who know and people who enjoy funky wild beers, they get a lot of praise. So I'm looking forward to trying these blends. I mean, Bauhaun was already quite nice, so uh, I'm sure this will be nice. So there's a few beers that I think were originally intended to be kind of collabs with Bauhaun that was then now Inside Teller collabs. And one of them, I think, was the second release of, of uh, Sensei. So um, is it third? I can't, remember, I can't remember if it's a second or third, but originally at Bauhaun, there was a collab with Bucker before it was just called Bucker. It was called Bucker Rider. There was a collab called Sensei. I never got to try that, but it was a blend of Lambic and Wild Ale. And uh, they redid it and then re-released -re it uh, under the Inside Cellars name. And uh, it is 7.8%. There was only 1160 bottles, and this was made in 2020. So... Four years ago, the creation of this started, and that's definitely when Bauhaun was still around. So uh, here we got some info. I love that. There's all the info on the side of the bottle. It says, this is our collaboration with Bocke in Hasselt, Belgium. We started with our Danish Saison, brewed with 25% malted oats to achieve a, achieve a lush and pillowy mouthfeel. It was then hopped with a heavy hand of New Zealand Waiti hops in the whirlpool for aroma, then oak fermented with our house mix of native yeast and lactic acid bacteria. We then blended this hoppy oat saison with a selection of specialty sourced and selected Belgian lambics. And that final blend was aged in Amaron barrels for three years. So it's been aged in Amaron wine barrels for three years. That sounds nice. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to this one. Uh, see how it is. I've, I've, I got the bundle where you got two bottles and then there was another beer. What, two bottles? No, oh, I think it's a, a bundle with six bottles. So it was like two of this, two of something else, two of something else. Can't remember entirely how it was. But I'm glad I have another bottle that can sit in the cellar for a while and we can see how it changes with time. But yeah, this looks nice. It's got a lightly hazy golden orange color to it, golden orange hue. Uh, it had a nice white head when pouring out. I mean, wow, look at that. I think that head is due to the oats as well. That looks beautiful. Uh, yeah, yeah, very, it looks like kind of like a Gouza type beer. So let's take on your own on this one. Oh man, <laughs> oh, this smells really good. The Amaron barrel shines. There's so much uh, wine barrel characteristics to this. It's got some earthy, kind of minerally, almost like pebble stone kind of nuance to it. Like there's definitely some minerality. Loads of stone fruit, but surprisingly enough, I don't know if that's Waiti and then, then just combination of wild uh, stuff and, and lambic and whatnot. But there's to me like passion fruit and like custard and apricot. And then there is a slight sharp acidic sourness that could be lightly vinegary, but it's 
soft. But yeah, there's something that reminds me of passion, passion fruit. Uh, pineapple too, or pineapple sauce. What? Pineapple. I was say, wanting to say apple, but I said pineapple. It's like the IPA spiel. <laughs> but um, yeah, some apple notes. Soft funk. It's not like super funky, but there's definitely some funkiness underneath, like slightly musty. Oaky funk. Man, I'm also getting maybe even a whiff of strawberry right now, which could be from the barrel. But the Amarone barrel is really shine, which is nice. Like there's so much vinous characters to this without it having any grapes, which is very impressive. It smells really freaking nice. Even some soft, like rustic maltiness underneath. Well, let's give it a test. Cheers. Oh. oh, that is really nice. And it's so crushable and refreshing. It's actually, well, not super, 7.8. Like a lot of gooses like this. This drink very much similar to like gooze alambic because it's highly carbed. But since it's not, well, it's not necessarily really gooze. You can't call it gooze because it's not one, two, and three year old lambic. Uh, it's lambic and wild ale and it's three years in one specific barrel. But that time in that barrel has developed a lot of character. Like it's so heavily vinous. It's so much flavor for its ABV too. And a really good mouthfeel. The oats really build some chewiness in the mouthfeel, which is really nice. It almost has like a slightly oily coating, which could also be because of the bacteria. I think Pediococcus, you know, is uh, contributing to often like ropiness, but it will fade away with time. But uh, I don't know if they can also do something to the body. There's also a slight salinity to it, which is really nice. And like minerality, like the savory, salty, minerality kind of like almost like pebble, wet pebble stones. Like I don't really know what stone, you know, stone. I never eat stones, but there's like this mineral stone. Of course, you never eat stones. <laughs> Maybe you eat nuts. No, <laughs> but uh, like this salty minerality, almost like soil or not soil, but like stone. Like granite, or I don't know. So there's just something that reminds me of minerality of, of of stones or rocks to this, which is weird, but it's nice. I especially love the salinity. It really works well. It has that custard thing too. Creamy woodiness that's like slightly custardy, vanilla-y. Loads of that wine profile. Again, it's similar to orange wine in the in the characteristics from the wine barrel. That really shines. It's very, very nice. It's like this heavy, fruity, vinous flavor that's leading towards the stone fruit and tropical fruit flavors, which you often get in some orange wines, depending on, of course, the grapes used. It's, it's again like apricot and kind of passion fruity vibes. Also like a little bit of green strawberry to me. And some chewy maltiness, as well as a, kind of like a rustic malt profile underneath. Not too much funk, just a little bit. Really the apricot stone fruity on the aftertaste. But yeah, it's just got so much layering and, and complexity. It re really reminds me of maybe not so much exactly Gouza, something between like Gouza and drinking like uh, single year Lambics. Like, uh, where's like, a, what are they called? Just like Oudalambic, for example. Similar to that actually, but then in a wine barrel. But it, it really works, it's really awesome flavors. Lots of depth, lots of complexity, lots of bright fruitiness, uh, and amazingly quaffable, drinkable, nice sourness. It's not crazy sour, which I love. That's how I want these kind of beers. Uh, I think this is world class. And this is the first, well, I've had a couple beers from Inside Cellars at festivals, but it's just been tasters. But this is the first I'm committing to a, a bottle, sharing it, enjoying it on my own. Uh, well, right now on my own, and then afterwards with my girlfriend. But I think this is world class. I think this is amazing. It's not the best you know, kind of wily I've had and not the very best lambic type beer I've had. Uh, I, you know, I've had some bitter things, I think, when I've been to festivals or just going to Belgium myself, being at Cantillon and whatnot, and also the Contain and, well, you know, these awesome places. But this is, you can't fault this. This is 95, I think. This is fucking amazing. I'm so stoked I have another bottle that is sitting in the cellar that I, I want to sit on for a while, I think. I would love to see how this develops with some complexity of age and some oxidation, just the light, especially with the barrel character and all. 
get some more sherry type nuances would be really nice. It's just really, really, really good right now, which is awesome. So great first release. <laughs> what a beer to start, like restart, I guess, reset with. Uh, that's awesome. So I've got a, quite a few different beers from these guys to try. Uh, I've got a, a lot of the different blends they released. I, I missed the Tommy Chef and Buff Cunt collab they did. But otherwise, I have quite a few of them, which is going to be fun. There's, they also play around with barrel aging and not just wine barrels, but there's also like rum barrels and all kinds of stuff, which is really awesome. So if you guys had a chance to try Sensei from Inside Cellars and Bokeh, let me know what you thought of it. 95 for me for a fresh bottle here in 2024. It's amazing. Released last year, I think, in 23. Yes, I think so, because I got this at the old place in the old apartment. So long video again, but shorter than last time. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought of the beer. If you had it, let me know what you thought of the very first vintage, if you had to try that one, the one that was a Bauhaus beer. And as always, please comment, subscribe, share the Facebook fan page, Twitter, and Instagram. Give the video a thumbs up and join it, and ring the bell for future notifications about videos. And I'm going to say cheers in delicious wild ale. And see you guys in another beer review. I could smell this all day. Cheers.